Yes, it has. I was hoping you remembered. Mark said to me last night, does Phyllis know that you're on tomorrow? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure she does. And he goes, did you send her an email to make sure she remembered? And I said, no, I'm sure she knows. And then I got this morning, I thought, oh, maybe I should have sent you an email in case you've forgotten we were doing it today. And so when you came online, I was like, oh, no, she remembered. <laughs> so well, you know, know. I, I remember right up until this morning. Oh, really? I thought about it all week long. Yeah. And then I totally forgot about it this morning. And we just finished eating dinner and Lou said, well, you're, you've got about 30 minutes before you're on. I went, what? How can I forget? <laughs> yeah. But probably it was a good thing I forgot or I would have just been nervous all day. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, so we were going to talk about kosher foods um, today or kosher in general. And I and I have the scriptures here that I wanted to refer to. Shall we start out with that? Yep, sounds great. Okay, I'm in Acts chapter ten, verse ten. I uh, was talking about Kepha, and he became hungry and wished to eat. But while they were but while they were preparing, he fell into a trance, and he saw the heaven opened a certain vessel like a great sheep bound at the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth in which were all kinds of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping creatures and the birds of the heaven. And a voice came to him, Rise up, Kepha, slay and eat. But Kepha said, Not at all, Master, because I have never eaten whatever is common or unclean. And a voice came to him again the second time, What Elohim has cleansed, you do not consider common. And this took place three times. And the vessel was taken back to the, to the heaven. And while Kepha was doubting within himself about what the vision might mean, look, the men who had been sent from Cornelius, having asked for the house of Shimon, stood at the gate. And calling out, they inquired whether Shimon, also known as Kepha, was staying there. And as Kepha was thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, See, three men seek you. But rise up, go down, and go with them, not doubting at all, for I have sent them. This was immediately after the vision. Yeah. So he was, because at, at this time the custom was that you became unclean if you went into a Gentile's house. It was an unclean thing to do because Gentiles were unclean. You couldn't go into their house, and you definitely couldn't eat with them. Okay. So okay. Kepha went down to the men who had been sent to them from Cornelius, and said, look, I am the one you seek. Why have you come? And he's, and they said, Cornelius, the captain, a righteous man, and one who fears Elohim and well spoken by the entire nation of Yahudim, was instructed by a set-apart messenger to send for you to this house and to hear words from you. So inviting them in, he housed them. And on the next day, Kepha went away with them. Some brothers from Yepho went with him, and the following day they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius was waiting for them, having called together his relatives and close friends. So this was a whole house. Not only did he let the Gentiles come into his house, but then he went into a house filled with Gentiles. Yeah. I'm going to skip a little bit because this is a wonderful thing. We all know that what happened is they were all immersed and became uh, joined, you know, they became immersed in, in the Ruach Kakadesh. And so then he, so the Kepha was talking about it and he was saying, and he was telling these people, I was in the city of Yepho praying and in a trance, I saw a vision, a certain vessel descending like a great sheet. So he explained to them about the creeping creatures and the unclean things. And the voice said, what Elohim has cleansed you do not consider. Christians and a lot of, a lot of non-believing in Torah like to think that this is justification to eat unkosher and all kinds of creatures. It says, well, they're all clean. Yeah. But Kepha goes and explains and says, and see, immediately three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to sent from Caesarea. And the Spirit said to me, 
to go with them, not down at all. And these six brothers also went with me, and we went into the man's house. So what, what he explained to them is it wasn't about food. It was about what Yahuwah declared to be cleansed. It was three sheets repre representing these three men because you don't eat with Gentiles. You don't go in their house. You don't have them in your house. Yeah. And, yeah. But Yahuwah was explained to him that that was the men who were unclean, and he's declared them clean. It has had nothing to do with food. He was just using that for an example. Okay, excellent. So we don't need to use this for an excuse um, to not eat kosher, but we also don't need to follow through with the kosher laws per se written down in the Talmud. Be I don't know where it where it says it, but in in the Yehuda, one of one of the curses Yehuda gave to the Israelites, he said that their table shall be a curse to them, a, a stumbling block. Their yeah. their table will become a stumbling block. And if you're very familiar with kosher uh, rules according to men's tradition, it is a stumbling block. I mean, they can't eat milk with oh, meat. Really? Oh yeah, you can't have milk. You can't have milk and meat on the table at the same time. You can't. It, you you have to keep, uh, pots and pans that have contained things with dairy in it separate from your pots and pans that have meat in it. And you even including your oven. It has if you if you cooking some a um, you can't you can't have egg and 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 cheese together because the egg is. Um, I think I might be out of this. Anyway, they've got a lot of rules and regulations that would just, you know. Where did they get those ones from? That That's mostly from the Talmud because there's been a tradition of, of the rabbis have always built fences around the rules. Like on Sabbath, uh, there's a fence around Sabbath. You have to start. 18 minutes before sunset, and you have to stay 18 minutes after. It's because they build in all these fences to make sure that you don't transgress, so that you don't have an accident transgressing. And it's it's just the traditions, and that's how their tables become a snare. That was the word. He said, I will make their table a snare. Mm -hmm. And and that's what happened. They, they built all these fences around all the Torah so that they go beyond keeping the Torah. It, they, they've added to yeah. the Torah. Anyway, I, I, that was background history to talk about. Um, I A lot of these foods that you think you have to have, we thought we had to eat kosher meat. And we did for 10 years or maybe 15 years. We ate kosher meat, and it wasn't easy to get here in Louisville. Mm -hmm. And then, then when the only kosher deli in the city of Louisville closed down, we had to join up with a local synagogue for them to ship meat in from Chicago. And once a, once a month, we would all gather in this parking lot waiting for the shipment of meat that we had to order ahead of time. And we would just stand there and, and, and get this meat. And they would just pass it out, and we did that for a number of years. And finally, we then the then a Kroger started having kosher meat, so we could go start eating. And then we, I did some investigation online. I when I looked up several of these meat packing companies that were kosher meat packing companies, and I called and talked directly to representatives for those companies, and I, I asked them. I said. How's it different? And um, they said, well, it's all the same beef. For example, if you're talking about the meat, it's all the same beef. They're raised the same way. It's just that when they come into the um, slaughterhouse, they have a kosher section and they have a Gentile section. And the, 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 the cows are taken, are, they're all, they're, they're just brought in there and they're all slaughtered the same way. 
but what happens is they pass over a certain section of them to the kosher side and the, um, the rabbi examines the entrails and the neck and, and, de and de de determine if the animal was clean or if he was diseased. And if he doesn't pass inspection, he goes back to the Gentile side. That is the only difference in the kosher meat. This is from a representative, from the kosher. And to collaborate that, I talked to someone who used to work in one of those um, slaughterhouses. And they told me the same thing. I didn't take their word for it. You know, that's why I went and did some checking for myself. So I had two witnesses. So then I said to myself, if there's no different... So then I did some research into, um, and I'm not trying to plug Laura's lean beef, but I did do some research and talk to their representative. And their animals, um, this was before I discovered organic foods, mm. but their animals were raised uh, differently. They were well fed and they were, um, they were their, their blood was drained out, not because they were concerned, concerned about being kosher but because that was how they get the lean beef is to they kill the animal and drain the blood completely out because a lot of the fat is still in the beef mm. in the blood so we started eating Laura's lean beef and then I discovered organic food uh, meats from Whole Foods here a locally owned well it's, it's a nationally owned uh, company but it's locally located in Louisville we have a Whole Foods and um, I think they even, they bought out wild oats, if you've heard of wild oats. But, oh, well, you're not. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, so we, we eat our meat. We try to eat organic. And um, then lately, the latest thing that happened to us is we discovered Beyond Organics, which we've um, discovered they do, this is the only company that that I know of that raises their beef totally organic and they are the beef is killed according to scriptures they this is the only slaughter house that I know of that kills their their beef you know because in scriptures in the Torah it describes how you were to kill the animal and I'm I haven't I didn't brush up on that just recently I should have but the description sounds like they take one quick stroke and slice their neck quickly and it has to be done with one stroke they have to be killed immediately mm -hmm. and then they're, and then they're immediately held upside down for all the blood to drain out and the but the emphasis was on the humane and that's what they do with these cattle is they're raised humanely and they're killed humanely according to scripture and so we and then they we we get their ground beef and it's just the beef is wonderful and the price of the beef is the same as what we were paying for it at Whole Foods. Oh really? Yeah. So it 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 really works out. If anybody's interested, I do have um, I can give you a link to my web. I have a website. I happen to be a representative for Beyond Organics. It's Phyllis White dot Beyond Organic. Dot com. So, but I, you know, if you're interested, you can, e anybody can email me or get in touch with torzo.net and I can talk to them about it. Yeah. So, now we don't really have to eat kosher meats per se, but we do need to follow the kosher laws of clean and unclean. So, what do you mean by that? We don't have to eat kosher meats per se. Well, okay, when I say kosher meat, meaning kosher killed um, according to the Jewish tradition. I mean, well, I, we should eat kosher meat, kosher killed. We should, but until Beyond Organics came along, there was no way to buy truly kosher killed meat. They, they're, they're just pulling the wool over everybody's eyes and charging 10 prices yeah or what they call kosher meat when it's not any more kosher than what the Gentiles eat. Yeah. So if you want truly kosher meat, there's only one place to get it here in the United States. Yeah. Or unless you live on a farm and you can kill it. But when I, 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 what I should have said 
when I said you don't need to meet kosher mints, I meant according to the rabbi, you know, Jewish tradition kosher meats. Yeah. But we, we should stick to the kosher laws as written in scripture. But basically, kosher, uh, the, the, we I keep using that word kosher, the proper clean foods, I should say clean meats, you know, cows, sheep, goats, chickens, turkeys, it, we're not allowed to eat vultures or, or pigs or seafood. And the thing that those animals have in common are their bottom feeders, like your shellfish. When I say seafood, I, if they have, like tuna and salmon and a lot of other fish, they have scales and they have fins that is acceptable. That Those are clean foods. But sharks, they don't have scales. Whales, they're not really fish. They're mammals. They're not clean. Um, so, you know, so, so, you know, a lot of people, I mean, they, they sell shark cartilage thinking it's good for this or that. It's not clean. We can't take shark cartilage, you know, and oysters and shrimp and all these bottom feeders. And that's why he wants us to not to eat those is because he wants us to be clean. So I've been doing all this talking. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I I don't know. I, my knowledge on kosher is very limited. Um, so what you've been saying is excellent hearing, um, and you seem to know a lot about it. Um, as far as what what are the requirements for? Uh, you just mentioned that um, fish had to have um, scales and fins. To be co to be clean, what uh, what about at land animals? Because you mentioned some animals, but what sort of bodily requirements That's or what, what makes it? In uh, Leviticus eleven or Waikra eleven, verse oh yeah, verse one is is where it starts. But if you jump down to verse three, whatever has a split hoof, completely divided, chewing the cud among the beasts, you do eat. Only these you do not eat among that chew the cut or those that have split hoof. And that's because they do one or the other. Okay. Because it chews the cut as is the camel. Because it chews the cud but does not have a split hoof. It is unclean to you. And the rabbit, because it chews the cud but does not have a split hoof. It is unclean to you. And the hare, because it chews the cud and does not have a split hoof. It is unclean to you. And the pig. Though it has a split hoof, completely divided, yet does not chew the cud, it is unclean to you. Their flesh you do not eat, and their carcasses you do not touch. They are unclean to you. They are so unclean that you, you can't even, if you even touch pig's meat that, that from, you know, that you bring home from the grocery, if some, you know, if you happen to make a mistake, you brought some bacon home and you thought it was turkey bacon, it was real bacon, and you touch it, you're unclean because mm -hmm. you touched it. Um, these you do not eat that are in the waters. Anyone that has fins and scales in the waters and the seas or in the rivers, that you do eat. But all that have not fins and scales in the seas and the rivers, all that move in the waters or any living being which is in the waters, they are an abomination to you. They are an abomination to you. Of their flesh you do not eat and their carcasses you abominate. All that have not fins or scales in the waters are an abomination to you. So that, you know, like I said, sharks and catfish, they don't have oh, okay. uh, scales. Yeah. So catfish meat is um, unclean. Yeah. And all the seashells, and I mean, you know, animals with seashells, shrimp, crayfish, clams, oysters, all those things. They're all bottom feeders. They don't have fins and scales. Mm -hmm. And um, and these you do abominate among the birds. They are not eating. They are abomination. The eagle and the vulture and the black vulture and the hawk and the falcon after its kind. Every raven after its kind. And the ostrich. A lot of people, uh, ostrich has become mm. a new, the new chicken here. Yeah. And it's, it's not clean. Yeah. And the night hawk and the seagull and the hawk after its kind. And the little owl, and the fish owl, and the gray owl, and the white owl, and the pelican, and the carrion vulture, and the stork, the heron after its kind, and the hoopoe, 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 h o o p o e, whatever that is, and the bat. 
And see that that is because um, they're all vultures. They all eat carrion meat. They'll eat dead flesh. That makes, you know, that's kind of how you can remember yeah. vultures. Yeah. yeah. All flying insects that creep on all fours is an abomination to you. Only these you do eat are the flying insects that creep on all fours, those which have jointed legs above their feet, which to leap on the earth like grasshoppers. Oh. These are them you do eat, the arba locust after its kind and the solemn locust after its kind and the hargol locust after its kind and the haggob locust after its kind. But all other flying insects which have four feet are an abomination to you. And by these you do, you are made unclean. Anyone touching the carcass of any one of them is unclean until evening. And anyone picking up part of the carcass of any one of them has to wash his garments and shall be unclean until evening. Every beast that has a split hoof, not completely divided, or does not chew the cud, is unclean to you. Anyone who touches their carcass is unclean. And whatever goes on its paws, among all the creatures that go on all fours, like cats, dogs, yeah. those are unclean to you. Anyone who touches their carcass is unclean until evening. So it goes on talking about, so, and the, these are unclean to you. Uh, among the creeping creatures that creep on the earth, the mole and the mouse and the tortoise after its kind, the gecko and the land crocodile and the sand reptile and the sand lizard and chameleon. These are all unclean to you among all that creep. Anyone who touches them when they are dead becomes unclean until evening. Okay. okay. So, and you're not supposed to... Um, Roadkill. <laughs> you know, supposed to if you find if you find a dead deer, which would be clean meat, but if you find him dead and you didn't kill him, then he's not clean. Okay. Uh, so I I think that pretty much talks about it. And he and I'm not going to go look this up, but I, I just want to mention and later in in prophecy he talks about um, when, when the people start eating rats or rodents. You know, it's an abomination. But they, he said, we will. We'll be reduced down. You know, society will be reduced down to eating rodents. And I read an article about how they were crossing a pig genes with mouse genes or rat genes to make the, supposedly, to make the pigs smell nicer oh. for raising them. So... <laughs> I mean, not only is that an abomination to to cross these genes, mm. but then mm. we're going. They're great, you know, doing it to eat to supply food for people. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. That's it's all in scripture. What you can eat, and what you can't eat. Um, over here, eating kangaroo is the latest thing because it's um, apparently a very lean meat and very good for you. I have no idea. I just asked Mark while he was trying to fix the internet what what animal like what defines an animal chewing the cud because I don't know if um, if a kangaroo does or not. So um, you don't happen to know, do you? It's an Australian animal, so I thought you may not know because you are, probably don't eat it well, over there. It has to be. No, we don't eat kangaroo meat over here. But I, you know what? I have not studied a kangaroo. If he has a cloven hoof, do do they have hooves or do they? Have paws. They have, yeah. They've got paws. Paws. They're not clean. Yeah. They have to have a cloven hoof, like a cow or a sheep or a goat. Oh, well, that's interesting to know. Then it's good to know for sure. And you have to have both. It has to be both a cloven hoof and chew the cut. Yeah. They have to do both, not one or the other. Is there any certain like when it comes to? Uh, pre preparing your food co like kosher food is there any certain way that food's supposed to be prepared in the kitchen but once the meat's been killed obviously and gets to you are you supposed to do any special preparations or anything with it before eating it there, there you know there's nothing in scriptures there's nothing in torah you, the only place you can find special preparations is in the where they've added to the torah the rabbinic rabbinical Judaism has added rules and regulations, but not according to Torah, as long as it's been killed kosher. You know, and I didn't get to the, um, 
I didn't get to this section. I was looking to see if I could find it real quick. Oh, yes. Uh, where it, I did not get to the section where it talks about how to kill. Um, no, it doesn't talk about it um, here. But there, there is another section. And I'm sure you can find it by searching eSword real quick. You can, um, you know, kill, how to kill or slaughter. I don't know if it would be kill or slaughter. But it describes that you're to drain all the blood from the animal once it's, but that's supposed to be done immediately, you know, okay. and uh, it's supposed to be hung to, to, for all the blood to drain out. And that is, you know, we would do it anyway just because he said so, but, but knowing why he said so helps because when you kill the animal, all the adrenaline, all the toxins, everything goes into the blood immediately. And so if you drain that blood out, then all the toxins and adrenaline, everything, and all the ho hormones and just ho horrible things go into the blood. And, and so you drain that out, and then you won't have that toxic, those toxins in, in you when, when you eat it. If you, if you eat meat that has not been killed kosher, you should rinse the blood off of it. You know, you, you bring home a package of meat from the grocery and it's just bloody in the, you know, the blood's just running. You should rinse that blood off. Um, some people um, soak it in salt water. Okay. I've done that. I'll, I'll soak my meat in salt water um, for about, a you know, I think about a half an hour. And not only does that make the meat taste real tasty <laughs> and tenderized, but it, that also will soak off the rest of the meat. It's kind of hard to do that with ground beef, yeah, which is why. It's, yeah, but uh, see, I'm so glad that I get my ground beef from Beyond Organics because it's they've already killed it kosher. If someone hasn't got access to, like you've, you've found Beyond Organics, but if someone can't get access to the kosher killed meat um is it better for them to just stay away from meat not necessarily um i, I don't you know the chicken i eat is not the, the only thing i get from beyond organic is um the the ground beef that's the only thing i buy from them but i buy organic chicken yeah um a lot of people say organic chicken is too expensive but your health is you know you know People, you don't need to eat as much meat as you do. Most people eat too much meat as it is. A fourth of a pound of meat all day is all you need to be healthy. Um, you clog up your arteries and you clog up your system with all this meat, and you, you don't need it. Yeah. Uh, actually, I've been on, you know, because of uh, the cancer um, treatment I've been on, the re regimen I've been off of me but I miss it and and sometimes I'll give in and I'll have just a little bit of chicken here or there because I I think you need a well-balanced diet yes. I you know I think being vegetarian is good and healthy being vegan is is good but I think sometimes you just need that meat because you have know, provided meat for us I mean, he went to great lengths to tell you what kind of meat to eat. Yeah. If he didn't want you to eat meat, he would have said, don't eat any of it. Yeah. <laughs> Just eat the plants and vegetables. Yeah. But he didn't. He told us to eat the meat. He flew quail in for people to eat. Yeah. You know, in the, in the, when they got tired of the manna, mm -hmm. he flew in some quail for them to eat. Yeah. So um, you, you need meat. Yeah. You just don't need to eat so much of it. So if, if organic meat is too expensive, don't eat so much. Just yeah. buy a little bit. And what you were saying before that when they, when they drain the blood, um, that that gets rid of all the toxins and everything in the in the meat. Why wouldn't tradition like why don't they drain the blood in traditionally killed like in the normal meat? What was <laughs> do you know what the reason is why they wouldn't do that then? I, I think they do drain the blood but what they do in the traditional slaughterhouses and this is taxing my memory here yeah. I have to trust Yahushua to remind me what I learned about the traditional slaughterhouses 
is that they frighten the animals. See, that's, that's the big distinction. They hang the animals upside down. Uh, if I'm, when, there are people out there that know better than I do. Mm -hmm. But my, what I remember being told is that they hang the animals upside down and kill them with a blow to their forehead. And then, then maybe they cut off their neck and drain the blood. But you see, they were, weren't killed with that slice. They were killed with a blow to their, like a hammer, but it's a, like a gun. It shoots like a hammer and kills them right in the forehead. And so all, this, all that time, all, you know, the fear of being hung upside down, mm -hmm. you know, all of that is, and all these toxins and go, the adrenaline and everything is going out into the blood and mixing all through the meat. Okay. And by the time they get around to slicing their neck or cutting their, I don't know if they slice their neck or if they actually cut the head off. By the time they get around to doing that, you know, all that's been reabsorbed into the muscle tissue. Okay. That, but they do drain the blood, yes, but it's too late. Yeah. Okay. And um, I assume, like, mainly talking about cows there, like beef. Um, with chickens, like how are they supposed to be killed? Because are they are that the same sort of thing? The chicken's supposed to have its head cut off too. I think okay. you you hang them up by their feet and cut their their heads off. And um, yeah, they're they're supposed to have their 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 heads cut off. One, but the thing that leaves the impression in my mind is it's supposed to be one blow. Okay, just one swift. And it's done because it's the, the most humane way. You don't want to terrify the animal before yeah. you die, you kill it. Yeah. And, you know, the logical reason, if, you know, people want a logical reason for that, it's because of the toxins and, you know, yeah. what it does to the animal before you, because you, you, you're going to eat all that. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. And you were speaking earlier about, like, um, you can't even, even touching the meat is, um, makes you unclean. Someone who worked in the food industry, I mean, would wearing gloves be enough to sort of, if they had to prepare foods for other Actually, people? no. Well, I get, unless you wore two pair of gloves, yes. Okay. Because it says that you're not to touch anything that has touched an unclean animal. So. Oh, wow, okay. Because if you're wearing the glove, you're touching the glove. Yeah, so, we, you know, and we've had birds die in our yard, yep. and we've had to go out and pick it up. So we would get two plastic bags, one inside the other, yep. to pick the bird up. So I wouldn't be touching the bag to touch the bird. Oh, very clever. You know? yep. So, uh, yeah, you, you're, you're supposed to be doubly removed from, touch, you know, touching the unclean animal. Yeah. And you're only unclean until evening and you take you're supposed to take a bath or take a shower is if something like that happens he get he he told you what to do in case it happened yeah. by accident um and then you just take a bath after evening yeah and and then you'll be clean again okay um what so i guess eating out and if people were to eat out in a restaurant or something like that would be a little complicated because you don't know if they've been using cooking unclean meats with your meal at all exactly you have to be extremely careful you know um we, we don't even eat out yeah. anymore at all but um can't afford it but yeah. <laughs> anyway when we did eat out um uh, for example when we would get when we used to get pizzas carry out pizza mm -hmm. we would always tell them not to cut the pizza because we could just picture them cutting a pepperoni or a sausage pizza and then taking that same thing and cutting our pizza with it. So yeah. there's all grease from the previous pepperoni pizza on our pizza. Yeah. Um, and, and they see, and when you go to a restaurant, they season vegetables with pork. And oh, do they? That's, oh, yeah. Yeah. You, it, well, they do it. In southern cooking in in America, okay. <laughs> green beans are cooked with pork. Oh, that's how you oh. do it. That's how you cook green beans. Wow! It's, and and barbecued beans is they're cooked with pork and oh my so goodness. many things. They pork. They think pork's a, 
something to flavor food up with. Yeah. You know? And it, it's awful. So you, you have to be really, really careful when you go out to eat. Yeah. If you, if you go to a Mexican restaurant, your refried beans are probably seasoned with lard. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You have to ask. We, yeah. we, we always yeah. ask, what's in the refried beans, yeah. you know? Okay, that's amazing. I would have thought staying away from meat altogether, you'd be a bit safer, but obviously not. <laughs> and, you know, and pre if you buy prepared foods from the grocery, yeah. you have to read through it. I used to make my own pie crust mm -hmm. and because I, I just like to do it, but then I got too busy, no time for that. And then I would buy one. I was only able to find one brand. Uh, Pillsbury was the brand for years. I bought Pillsbury because it was the only brand of pie crust that did not use lard. Wow. And recently, yeah, they used vegetable shortening. And recently they switched back to lard. And I'm thinking, in this day and age, why would you, you know? So now I found a, if anybody's interested, Marie Callender. Their, her pie crusts are made with vegetable shortening. And I found them in the freezer section. So if you just want to make pies and you don't want to make the pie crust yourself, Marie Callender is the only pie crust you can use. And and because the, they say they use lard. Yeah. A yeah. lot of bread over here is made with lard. You have to read oh the labels on your bread. So what other foods for people who had no idea that it was in so many food? Um, do you know what other foods would have <laughs> um, this uh, like uh, unkosher or unclean meat food in it? I've heard of gelatine. Uh, uh, gelatine has, is made with... Um, gelatin pork, is made yeah. with lard, yeah. yeah. But you can buy kosher gelatin and vegetable gelatin. That's become more and more available, especially if you go to your, um, you know, your Whole Foods or yeah. your health food stores, they have them. But even my, our local, our Kroger grocery store has a health food section where you can find a lot of, you know, clean foods. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of things that you would just be surprised if you, yeah, if you're reading through an ingredients list and you see gelatin, you know, right away. Yeah. I know I had trouble finding yogurt over here without gelatin in it. Um, yeah. And so we were sort of like, no, nope, can't eat that yogurt. And we found one particular brand. We don't really eat. I make, make our own now. But um, like one particular brand that you could eat that just that didn't have gelatin in it. And so it was amazing how difficult it was to find yogurt without pork in it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they don't sound like they go together. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I know. It's just it's like they've tried to uh, make everything unclean <laughs> by just putting a bit of pork in everything, a bit of you know, <laughs> just right. there's nothing clean left. <laughs> it's kind of like the lies the enemy likes to give you. He'll he'll give you a whole, a whole sermon. You can listen to this whole sermon, yeah. and they'll embed, and it all sounds really good, and then they'll embed a little bit of a lie. Yeah, you know. Lou was um, watching something that he was really impressed with this speaker, really impressed with him. And, and he was saying something about there was four that Adam, uh, he, that Satan told Kawa four lies. But then after he looked it up and thought about it, he said, no, there was not four lies because um, I, I can't remember what all four of them was, but one of them, he said that, that the snake told her that she was not to touch the fruit, but that's the snake didn't say that. Kawa said that. Yeah. But the point I'm trying to make is, see, it sounded really good, and, and Lou was going along with it, going, "Wow, this is sounded really great." Yeah. And he was trying to explain it to me the next morning, and then when he was well, it was this morning, and so at, in the process of talking about it, he was going, "Wait a minute." That's not what it said. But, you know, if you're listening to a speaker yeah. and he sounds yeah. so smooth and you're just going to buy everything that they say. Yeah. How do we get off on that? We were talking about food. I'm yeah, sorry. How they, yeah, no, like how they put a little bit of, of lies in everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. 
It's very true. If you don't do the research and look, look up stuff for yourself, then you just get swept away in the lies. Yeah. And, and the, yeah, the food too. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Because if you're making a pie and everything's everything's wonderful, you cook, cut up your ingredients yourself and made this wonderful pie, but you use this pie crust yeah. that has lard in it. Yeah. The whole pie is unclean. I actually read um, the... Funnily enough, in this last couple of weeks, I read a book that had been recommended to me by a couple of people. And my dad had had the book on his shelf, and he was getting rid of it. And he gave it to me a few weeks, like about a month or two ago. And then a couple of weeks ago, a few people recommended the book to me. I said, "Oh, that's funny because I've just got it here." So I thought when we went away last week, I thought I'll take the book and read it. And um, it was about it was called the Maker's Diet. So it was all about um, you know what the original diet was that we were supposed to be eating and and all that sort of thing. Oh yeah. And then, funnily enough, I must have looked up something about it on the internet. I must have typed it into Google or something, and up came Beyond Organics, the company you were doing. And so apparently the guy who wrote this book actually founded Beyond Organic because um, he's into well, kosher and um, organic and kosher foods, um, the only way to eat. Um, but he was saying in that um, there was – now I forgot my whole point. There was <laughs> – there was uh, something he said in there about, oh, um, I think it was in that book I read it, that if you go without eating pork or any sort of unclean foods, like you stop eating them, when you do eat something, again, you don't necessarily notice the difference, but when you do eat, if you do eat something unclean, it'll make you violently ill because your body can't cope with it because you've gotten rid of all the toxins from that food, like from not eating it for so long, that if you do have it, I know one day we took the boys, um, my parents had bought us tickets for a show for the boys to go and see in the city, and we took them to have Japanese um, for lunch beforehand, um, and we, I mean, like we only ordered chicken and stuff, but then I guess now, looking back, we didn't, re you don't really know what they put in Japanese food, um, yeah. and the boys in particular, uh, who have never had um any sort of unclean foods because we've been eating kosher since they were eating, um, were violently ill that night. Both of them, it was Josiah and Luca, both vomiting all night, really sick all night. Mark and I felt okay, um, but they were really, really sick and we couldn't work out what it was. And then we started to think, well, maybe there was something in that food. So we've stayed away from any anything like that now, being extra careful. And like eating out, like you said, you just don't know what they, what they how they prepare yeah. things and what they put in things. So... Yeah, I, I think if you, like you were saying, if you made that pie crust, if you were completely kosher and your body wasn't used to it, you may, may make you sick as well. You, you know, for, for years, um, Lou was telling, I think he may have even mentioned it in Fossil's Customs, and I had to remember, remind him to take that out, but he was talking about how White Castle hamburgers, that's a big thing over here. They've been around for as long as I've, I've been around. Yeah. And they... There, are people make fun of them because they're mostly soybean, like okay. you know, ninety percent soybean and just ten percent. Well, these days that would be a good thing to be mostly soybean. Yeah. But their buns are made with lard. Oh no! So, you know, and and that's that's something that's that's recently we we've just recently become aware of. So you know, and any any time you go out to eat, especially the fast food restaurants, you know, it you you don't know what that stuff is. No. You know? And and the I don't know, I but I know what you're talking about about making you sick mm. because I've been off of meat for so long, except for the I, I allow myself some of the beyond organic, you know, because I've been trying to beat this cancer. And which you who is healed by the way. Oh, that's wonderful. And, uh, I was yeah. going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with last week or a week ago, I had fixed. I had prepared some something for my boys to eat, and they were. And it looked so good, and they were just enjoying it. And I thought, I'm just going to have a little taste, you know. So I cut off a little piece. Do you know it made me sick to my stomach? Yeah. <laughs> they were just lapping up. There wasn't anything wrong with me. I got sick to my stomach, and so I, that bears out what you were just saying, this fella. What was the name of the book you wrote? The Maker's Diet. The Maker's Diet. I, yeah. yeah. 
so that that kind of bears out it that works even for kosher meat you know yeah. clean meat it's not yeah. used to eating something you know that's um organic and kosher mm -hmm. killed then it just my body just rejected it yeah so what um you were saying you've been on a special diet for the for to heal the cancer oh, what have you been doing about four months oh about four months or I mean, I was probably more like five months now but um yeah i've been just eating mostly vegetarian like i said i would di digress occasionally have maybe some chicken maybe some of the organic beef yeah. you know i'm talking maybe not every day yeah. but Mostly, um, I had a, a dear friend of mine give me a, a Vitamix. And so everything I eat has been going in, you know, fresh food. You know, fruits and vegetables have all their health while they're living. You know, it's the difference between if, if you cook it, then you, you're killing it. Yeah. But while it's living, it, if you ever notice you take carrots or celery or, or onions out of your refrigerator or wherever you keep them and you'll notice that they'll be growing still mm. growing inside your refrigerator you see that yeah you know sometimes you'll buy um roaming lettuce and it's all sealed up in a little package and you can't get it out because while it was in the package it grew yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're like struggling to back out well it's all living food and so i just take this living food and put it in a blender and then i get the benefit of of, and it chops it so fast and br breaks it down to it's almost molecular so that you're getting all the enzymes and all the you know the 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 vitamins and everything and and you can consume much more of it than you could if you were just trying if you took the thing same thing and put it in a bowl and just try to eat through it you you couldn't get through it yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. i know i've looked at especially all the carrots because yeah. they're hardy you know, but you can blend it up and, and drink it, and it's just, it makes you so healthy. But oh, there must be, I must have um, 30 different herbal things that I take every day. You know, I just take handfuls of these herbs, you know. But Yehuz um, healed that, that cancer. It's because um, I was talking to my Lucinda Robinson. She's the one I was following this the guide in her book, uh, which we happen to sell on Tourism. But what's the name? Of I, the I just, huh? What's the name of the book? I wish I could tell you. <laughs> I'll have a look after it. Uh, I, you said I can run away. And oh come yeah, back. that's fine. Mark can edit it all. He does anyway. <laughs> you won't. You won't go away this time. No, right? no. I'm hopefully not. I'm sure it won't drop out this time. <laughs> okay, natural herbal therapy book. Okay. Um, it's called Natural Herbal Therapy Book, and of course she she teaches vegetarianism. Mm -hmm. But if you're, but that's part of the cleansing, parasite yeah. cleansing too. Is it's her premise is that most of all the disease that we have can may be a result of parasites. Parasites being bacteria, fungus, literal parasites. You know, when you think of parasites, you think about little buggies living inside of you. Well, the, the fungus and, and bacteria are parasites also. So um, she she gives you a diet to rid yourself of these parasites parasites and, and I did a colon cleanse yeah. and I follow this regimen of herbs that she you know in the book and I was doing what was in her book yeah. and then after the first two months of following that I the the the, the cancer really subsided mm -hmm. and it and I all mm -hmm. shrank back to just this one tumor that I had left yeah. but it was yeah. still painful so then she she switched me over to a different regimen of things to take. Yeah, and now it's um, it's all it's it's uh, the pain's all gone. I still have a knot, but she said we we we're going to be working on that with um, exercises and and she's got me on new things, including cod liver oil. Yeah, but it, it's in capsules. It's in vegetarian capsules. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> See that that's another thing when you take even you're, you're, you're yeah. taking herbs and things you've got to make sure that your capsules are co either with kosher gelatin or vegetarian capsules I remember hearing about that that's right yeah yeah and you wouldn't even and she's care. very yeah, yeah. Lucinda is very particular she'll tell you where to find the, the herbs that you need yeah. in the vegetarian kosher capsules oh that's wonderful I'm really happy to hear that um, it's working and you're feeling a lot better that's fantastic yes oh me too I praise yeah. you Hill. I tell you it's okay. Because I, I, I know what it's like to go the doctor route, mm. and that's a a nightmare you don't want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> that's awful. Yeah. So, I, you know, he did this for me without even seeing a doctor. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, he's your doctor. He is our, our physician, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. yeah. That book so, sounds very interesting, actually. Yes, Natural Herbal Therapy. Yeah, okay. I'm going to have to order a copy now. <laughs> I, I read a little tidbit. You know, everybody's worried about eating tuna or salmon because of the mercury yeah. contents. Uh, but I and I, I wish I remembered where I read this from, but I, I absorbed this information. I don't remember the sources, but right. they were saying that the, the fish themselves have their own natural way or Yahuwah gave them a method for uh, absorbing and eliminating mercury poisoning oh. so you don't really have to worry about mercury poisoning because the fish themselves have taken care of it oh that's great before before it gets to you yeah that's good to know yeah because i did get concerned with the kids eating um tuna and stuff excuse me. i was concerned excuse me. sorry I, I didn't hear you. I was concerned about the children, especially eating um, tuna and, and stuff, because of the because it's been more and more publicised about the mercury um, issues with fish, with tuna in particular. Yeah, I, I'd like I'd like to do personally do more research on that. I think I'd like to go into Google and because because I don't know if these studies about the mercury and oh forgive me. We're not even supposed to be saying that word. That's a pagan word. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Yeah, it's the name of a pagan deity. Uh, see, it, even our speech yeah. is sprinkled with it, with the un unclean words. Yeah. Every, you know, you can't turn one way or the other without. Yes. So may you have forgive me for saying that word. I guess I had to say it so that I could teach other people not to say it. Yeah. Anyway, um, I would like to see if these studies that discuss this this thing being in the fish if they tested the fish for the poisoning mm. or if it was just because see even as, as I was telling you about the article I read and I, you can't trust just anything you read yeah. because it seems to me like certainly they become concerned about the poisoning uh, because they've tested the fish and found it in the mm. fish is so I don't know. You just can't believe everything you read, and it's not like me to read something like that and take it to heart. So I, I, forgive me for throwing that out there. You need, you need to test yeah. everything you hear. Yeah. I, I have yeah. I, I have friends that I have debates with on a regular basis because he or she will read something on the internet. Well, do you know so and so is doing this and saying that, and it seems outlandish? And I said, "Well, have you spoken to so and so in person?" Well, I don't know that person. I said, "Well, then how do you know? You know, if you haven't heard it from his or her mouth, yes. how can you go around talking about? You just can't. Just because you read something on the internet, you know, you can't. You, you know, just I, I think about the the guy that did the translated the scriptures that I was quoting from. Um, Brother Chris Costner before he died, he didn't take one manuscript it, when he was looking at the Hebrew or the or the Aramaic, whatever he was reading from. He didn't take one manuscript. He laid out several and compared each one to make sure that they all agreed. And if there was a difference, 
he would look to see what the majority of them said, and, and he would ignore that difference. That's that's translation of the scriptures that we saw, yeah. because it um, because he went to such great lengths to make sure yeah. of the accuracy, and we had to do that. We had to do that with the internet yeah. or anything, we, an email. Somebody sends you an email, and they said da 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 da, and like. How do you know this? Do you know this person personally? Yeah. Have you seen this yourself? My parents, when I was a little girl, um, my parents taught me. They said, Phyllis, you should only, don't believe everything you see and only half of what you hear. Yeah. And nowadays, you can't even believe that much because of Photoshop. Everything can be Photoshopped. Everything yeah. is computer graphics. Yeah. You know? I say, don't believe anything you yeah. see or hear, especially if it's on the internet. I know the internet's the worst, isn't it? Because <laughs> anyone can write anything on the internet and, and people oh, yeah. make it. To, and with blogs these days, everyone's I've always got people's blogs coming up on my Facebook thing, and you think it's an article and you read it, and then you find out it's just this person's opinions or this person's thoughts or something, and it's not yeah. even any evidence of it being truth or anything. So <laughs> it's quite amusing how, how uh, the internet can really get you caught up like that. Yeah. Yeah, don't believe it, girls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Test the waters, find out for yourself. Yeah. And, and I was just thinking after you mentioned that, that, that about the fish and, and saying that um, you weren't sure if it was true, the uh, other thing to think is that that article may have been written by or, or funded by um, the fish companies, whoever it is that sells the fish, and they don't want people to stop buying it, so they've put it out there that, that, it's, that it's not true. Um, Absolutely. I, see, I didn't even think of it. And I'm the skeptic, and that didn't even occur to me. Yeah. Well, I've made you even more of a skeptic now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we all have to be skeptic. You know, yes. uh, Paul told us, was it Paul or Peter? He said, you had to study to show yourself approved. Yeah. And that that's advice is good for today as it was then. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, thank you very much for all the information you've given us today. It's wonderful. Well, I hope it wasn't too boring because I feel like I did most of the talking. <laughs> no, I really enjoyed it. It was very interesting. And I do okay. find, um, like, everything that you're talking about, food is a very interesting topic um, just on what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat. I just I find it fascinating um, you know, reading, like, reading things and finding out about it. And like you said, you read five or six different things and they all have contradicting information and you have to work out what's true i did um really enjoy even though the author of the book the, Ma the maker's diet um he's christian i believe although his parents were messianic um so he's raised messianic and he does um agree with kosher um like kosher foods and all that sort of thing um obviously because he founded that beyond organics company so he's um made sure that it's available but um I did enjoy the fact that he was using scripture as his reference as to what we should be eating. Um, and I know there's a few diets around which he actually talked about as well that take you back to you should be eating what they're eating in the garden, um, you know, which is just fruit and veggies. And then he said, but our, our bodies apparently are now uh, designed to eat a little bit of meat as well. And that's why you should, like he's saying, you should, like you were saying, a little bit, you know, is, is good to have. So um, it is interesting, though, to look at that from more of a scriptural point of view, like what you should be eating, like we do with the kosher foods, we should be eating this and shouldn't be eating that. Um, but then everyone goes out and buys, you know, everything off the shelf, like all your processed foods. And then we talked about how you don't even know if they've put unclean foods in the processed foods. So you really have to be so careful <laughs> about what you right. eat. <laughs> and, you know, can, can we spend a minute to talk about genetically altered foods? Mm. Yes. You know, it, you, when you were talking about, um, the, he gave us every seed-bearing plant mm. for food. Mm. Well, th these days, you don't see very many seeds in your fruits anymore. No. I don't know what happens in Australia, but oh, in, in the United States, most of you, you know, pick up oranges and, and, and grapes, and they're all seedless yes. these days. Mm -hmm. You, you can't hardly find. And watermelons. Yeah, that's big and popular. And the, 
the food's not the same. It doesn't taste the same, mm. you know? And I don't even remember when this happened. I remember when I was a child, everything had seeds in it. Yeah. You had to spit the seeds out. Yeah. And now I was giving a, a grape to, no, it was an orange. I was giving an orange to uh, one of my grandsons, and he was going, what's all these seeds in here? And I said, well, fruit's supposed to have seeds. You know, it's just the opposite, you know, of how I was raised. You expect the seeds, and now they aren't. And it's all from genetic, um, you know, genetically modified food. Yeah. And they, they, they're they changing, just like I was telling you about the pig and the, the, the mm. rodent. But they're, they're splicing strawberries with animal genes yeah. and... I mean, just all kinds of things that they're they're doing. It's a bother yeah. to me. But what choice do we have? I mean, I, I try to buy watermelon with seeds, yeah. you know, but it's just but they're 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 so expensive. Mm. They're twice the price. Okay. Yes, that's just fantastic. I mean, you can buy a, a seedless watermelon for, you know, in the height of the summer, I'm talking about when they're most plentiful. You can buy a seedless watermelon for about 4 or $5. But if you want a, a seeded watermelon, it's going to cost you 8 or $9. Oh, wow. It's the opposite here. Although uh, now that you mention it, last summer it was the opposite here. Like a, seed, a seedless one was more expensive. But I have noticed this summer that the seedless ones are getting cheaper than the seeded ones. So they're obviously in the process of still doing it here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's because they're, they, they're, all the farmers are switching over that. It's more abundant. Yeah. You know, I, it's, it's, just, it's just not right. Yeah. You know, and I do it, though, because the, – but the grapes with seeds in them – Look like huge globes. I mean, they're compared to the little the, the seed the grapes without seeds. Yeah. They're little tiny things, but you buy the the ones with seeds. They're nice, big, and plush, and they taste delicious. Yeah. They taste like food. Yeah. But grandchildren, yeah, they got seeds in them. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't understand it. My kids are like that too. Yes. They say, "Has it got seeds in it? I don't want to eat it if it's got seeds. I have to pick out seeds of things before they." eat them <laughs> so yes they're not used uh, to it are they yeah well when they're little that's good you don't learn jumping no. to see but we really don't have have much choice yeah you know we're not given a choice I, you can't find oranges with seeds in them here in the states not in kentucky anyway yeah we yeah. have um valencia oranges still have seeds but and nobody wants to buy them. They don't taste as nice. Or they're much bit, more bitter, I think, than the the seedless oranges, which are more popular and people usually buy them. So, yeah, what you're saying yeah, is true. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't looked. I looked at the Valencia oranges, and they they just don't look right. They yeah. just look. They don't look appealing. They don't taste really that nice. But they're the only ones we've got with seeds. And then we've got the navel oranges, which are seedless orange, and they yeah. taste. Better and they look very much nicer, so people will buy them. <laughs> right, and, and the organic vegetables are just so overpriced. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I think if all the farmers would switch to organic, yeah, then it would all be the same price, yeah. you know. But, but they won't because of money, making money and greed and all those things that they want. It's to harder to raise food that way. Yeah. We've because it, because the earth is cursed. Yeah. <laughs> Yahuwah yeah. cursed the yeah. earth. We just planted some seedlings the, the other week, Josiah and I, to make our grow our own organic veggies. Um, oh, we've only got okay. we've only got a few things. We don't have enough room for a proper garden um, here. But we've just sort of done, you know, some lettuce and tomatoes and cucumbers and all that sort of thing. So he's very excited. We've actually later today got to put them into the garden because they've gotten too big in their seedling trays. But, yeah, it is. It's because it's so expensive. I sort of said we need to grow some of our own stuff because you can't afford to eat good food <laughs> if you buy it all from the shop because <laughs> it's right. just really expensive. I did um, – I've, I've been sourcing because I was looking for organic uh, food and same with um, meat and everything 
um, I was trying to source out an organic fruit and vegetable place around here. Where we live, we're sort of near um, at the base of the Blue Mountains, which is um, very much more sort of they're into organics and hippie, the hippie like people up in the in the mountains. So it is uh, occasionally a bit easier to get healthier and bit like more organic foods a bit cheaper because of that community being nearby. Um, but I did source a place where the organic food wasn't um, much more expensive. I said we just eat a bit less and it will cost the same. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we got a box from them this week. And it's amazing the difference in, in the flavour and everything of the food. And even just looking at the food looks much better. And um, But, yeah, we have, like I, I said, we have to sort of start growing our own stuff to, to make up for that because it's too expensive otherwise um, to, to buy it all from them. <laughs> Yeah, Lucinda was telling me that, I, especially me because I was fighting the cancer, yeah. that uh, the pesticides act as estrogens oh. inside your body. Yeah, you know, once you've absorbed them and they're they're broken down and they're chemical. She explained it, mm. but I don't know, and maybe that book will explain it too. Yeah. Um, but so. The first time I had breast cancer, it was um, caused, or, or it was the cancer was fed by estrogen. So you know, I you definitely don't, you know, if you're trying to prevent or cancer, fight cancer, you don't want those pesticides mm. because mm -hmm. they'll act like estrogen, and your your the cancer will actually feed off of it. Wow, that's very interesting to, um, yeah. Because a lot of people would think that just eating fruit and veggies, are, they're being healthy, but you're not thinking about the extra things that go on it. <laughs> right. Can, can I spend a minute? This is a warning to all you women out there. <laughs> Please don't go on. Don't decide you want to take estrogen. If you're going through the change of life, you're going through the change of life because your hua is making your hormones calm down. And it does, it takes time, just, you know, just like I was telling my granddaughter, you're not going to suddenly be a lady. You have to go through these changes mm -hmm. gradually, or you have to unlady yourself uh -huh. gradually. And you're going to have hot flashes. And if you go and run to a doctor like I did and said, oh, I need to take estrogen because I don't want the hot flashes and, and I want to feel good about myself and blah, 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 blah. And a year later, I was having my breast removed, mm. you know. Uh, maybe it was a little bit more than a year. But, yeah, and then they said it was it was feeding off of the estrogen yeah. that, I, that I asked the doctor to give yeah. me. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Yeah. You don't need that. It's not normal. If your hua is causing your body to not produce estrogen, that is so that you can change into the later phase of your life. And you go against him and decide that I'm going to do it my way and take estrogen because I'm not going to accept what the creator is doing to my body, then, you know, you, you've done this to yourself. You've kicked against, it's like kicking against the goads, yeah. you know, and you, you've done it to yourself. That's what I did. I did it to myself. I wanted to defy the aging process and I lost a breast over it. Thanks for so, sharing that, sister. Yeah, if I can save anybody from going through that, please, yeah. please don't do it. Hormone, H HRT, hormone replacement therapy, no. Mm -hmm. Just let your body be natural. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for okay. sharing. Have you got anything else you wanted to add for today? <laughs> no. How, what about you? No, I don't think so. I feel like this, this has been a great show. Um, I've really, really enjoyed hearing everything that you've, um, all the information you've, you have on, on the food and everything. Um, so, yes, thank you very much for today. Well, thanks for getting together today. That's this right. is love. Yes. <laughs> and I want to thank your wonderful husband for all that he does to make these things happen. Yes. He, he does a great job. Thank you, Mark. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure he'll, um, oh, well, he'll hear that when he's editing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. 
I guess we're done for today. Yeah, that was wonderful. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you have, think of anything, any topics for next time, just email through because this was a great one to do. You know, I, I'm so used to responding to because I get phone calls all day long. Every, well, not all day, but every day I get phone calls. Yeah. People want to discuss this, discuss that. And I keep telling myself I'm going to write some of these things down. but that, that, yeah. I never think to do it. I want to try. I'll try. You need um, to put a little note next to the phone that says, write down, you know, write, yeah. <laughs> write, write it down. And, you know, anybody that's listening to these these talks we have, any women or men, if they have anything that they want us to discuss, they can write you or me. My yeah. email is phyllis at tourzone.net. Email me or, or Amy. Yeah, my, my email is uh, Dave. D A V O S two seven three zero at gmail dot com. Great. Yeah, you can email either one of us. I, I do get emails from people telling me that they enjoy watching us. Yeah. You know. But anybody that wants to hear a topic discussed, yeah. let us know. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. All right okay. then. Well I will speak to you well, so we'll be on in a fortnight again. So the guys will be on next week. And then we'll be okay. on the following week. So I think that's the plan for now so that Mark's not trying to edit two shows every week and we're trying to find the time for it and everything. So. But you enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Have you got – should be coming to the end of yeah, it now? I've, I've got about 30 more minutes. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, it's five. It's 5.30 here. Yep. Yeah. What, time, what time is it there? It's 9.30 in the morning, so on, on the first day morning. So we're, we've finished the Sabbath. Yeah, okay. Well – I'll see you in a, in a couple of weeks. Yep, yeah, and I'm sure we'll email between then. All right, thank All you. Right. Bye, sister. Bye. Shalom. He's good, he is good, he is good. Yahusha is good. Great is his loving kindness forever. Yahusha is good. He is good, he is good, he is good. He is good. Yahusha is good. Great is His love and kindness forever.